happy Monday. Today is April 5th. It's 11.40 a.m. I have class in five minutes and I'm in charge of leading discussion. So I'm going to quickly throw on um, some mascara, some other makeup, and hop right into the day. All right, it's a few hours later now. I finished leading discussion. I think that it went really well. It was on this book that I picked out called Situating Writing Processes. This is also on my list. Um, this book is really, really interesting. I haven't finished my way through all of the chapters, but it basically is talking about how we need to remember the role that like the body and place and lived experiences um, play in the writing process. And that's something that I have thought a lot about since being in grad school. So it's almost 1.45 and I'm going to teach my first section of public speaking and then right after that, I turn back around, teach my second section of public speaking. Alrighty, I changed out of my teacher clothes. Just put on a very, very casual outfit. I'm going to go to Target. I can't decide if I want to go to the far Target, but it's a good Target. Because it's almost 5 o'clock and I have therapy at 7. I ended up going to the far target. The lighting is all sorts of strange right now. Um, and I found some good stuff. I bought a pair of shorts, a pair of dress pants, and like a cute tennis skirt. Who is she, Gen Z? Um, so I'm gonna try that all on when I get home. I recently have gotten back into this Batty and Tay album. I know if like country isn't your thing, you're not gonna like this. I like go through phases with country where I'm like, yeah, I like it, then sometimes I don't. I only listen to pop country. I also only listen to like music by album. It's very, I don't know, kind of annoying of me, but here we are. Um, and I just cannot stop listening to this. A few gems are Ain't There Yet, Fantastic, Friendstone, oh, that's always a classic. Um, Try On Rings is pretty good. I don't need to know. Incredible. So if you're a country gal or guy, this is a goodie. First, we just picked up these denim shorts from Wild Fable. They were only 15 bucks. Then I got this tennis skirt, like I said, because I want to be Gen Z so bad. And it's just white. This is not doing it justice. It's like pleated. I tried it out. It's a little short. Um... But I don't know, the next size up just looked like really wide on the waist. And then I got these, which I think are so fun. They're these wide leg dress pants, but like I'm really into that square belt look. Um, and then they're pleated like old school style. And then they're wide leg. They're pretty long, but I think they're supposed to be long. I just think that looks so cute with like a dressy top. Um, be a really cute like teacher look, conference presentation look. Hello, happy Tuesday. It is already well into the afternoon, 12.18. This morning was sort of a whirlwind of things. I had a meeting at 10 and for some reason I decided to set my alarm to 9 thinking that that would be enough time when I know myself and I know that I take like at least 30 minutes to get out of bed. So, um, I actually was scrambling this morning to set up a COVID vaccination appointment, um, because I'm currently living in Miami, Florida and it is an overpopulated city. Um, I was able to find a vaccine slot on Saturday, but I do have to drive, um, about an hour and a half to get there because it's a little further north. Um, but I'm okay with that. The drive will be worth it um, to feel like I am doing my part to um, put a stop to this virus. And then I sort of just like jumped right into my meeting, um, made a really quick cup of coffee, and I was actually in charge of leading that meeting because it was for um, our rhetoric student chapter. Um, and then I was talking to my mom for a little bit. And then before I know it, my whole morning was gone. So I went ahead, took a shower, um, and now I'm going to 
finally eat something for the first time all day. responsibilities by playing Animal Crossing for like the last hour. I just really need to finish this reading list and I just don't want to. <laughs> My motivation this past week has just been like down the toilet. <sighs> I don't know if it's because it's April and I'm just like really <laughs> over the semester or if it's because it's the end of coursework. I really don't know, but it has felt really hard to do things lately and I hate that. <laughs> That's why I decided that I would like try and vlog some more this week, but I don't know. I feel just really like stuck and I feel like a, a lot of my vlogs are like productive vlogs showing you guys what it's like to be in grad school um but if I'm being fully honest and transparent I have not felt super productive lately um at all and I think it's okay to rest I think it's healthy more than okay to rest I think it's necessary but I feel like I'm at a point where I've been doing the bare minimum work and just prioritizing rest for like over two weeks. <sighs> and I don't know why things are so hard right now. Okay, I finished tutoring at the writing center. It's a little after four o'clock and I just really need to like snap out of this funk that I'm feeling in. And I just feel like the past two weeks have been like a cycle of getting myself out of funks. I even made a reel about it on Instagram. Um, so I placed a mobile order on Starbucks um, because all I'm eating is a bagel today. And that's what I do when I get in funks. I just stop eating and that only makes it worse. Just got a tomato mozzarella panini and passion tea lemonade i hadn't had this in forever and then recently i got one with my best friend last weekend and i was like yeah i miss these boys okay time for a quick little ulta haul um i got conned into getting this set because this is the best mascara you can't fight me on this the benefit bad gal um and it's originally 26 so for 39 for only a few dollars more i can get a full size cookie highlighter and then a full-size um professional primer and i have the sample of this from ipsy and i really like it um will i use the highlighter and the primer that often probably not but here we are um i got more setting spray i really like the morphe setting spray it's really affordable this thing was only 10 bucks i got the smaller size just because i'm going back to indiana this summer so i'm trying to not have like huge products that aren't necessary i've also been really wanting like a cream based or like liquid blush so i got the color pops blush sticks i was like reading reviews online as i was shopping in the store and these seem like pretty decent um it was like eight bucks so why not and then i got this liquid blush too i have the maybelline um like cheek heat or something like that and it does not last but the nyx review or the reviews for this nyx sweet cheeks um were really good so we'll see how this one goes i really want like a liquid blush um for when i don't wear like foundation or anything or like bb cream i feel like it'll go on smoother and i got the buffet um serum from the ordinary i was really wanting the tula toner because my sister got it um for like the 21 25 however many days of deals that ulta does but oh my goodness it was 40 dollars, like 45 and i was like no way so the ordinary is like a way cheaper alternative so i did the ordinary i have some other other serums but buffet is supposed to be like everything all in one so i got that 
And then I just got some nail polish remover because I'm gonna see my sister-in-law tonight and she really wanted some. So 100% acetone nail polish remover for her. So that's my little Ulta haul right here. I ate dinner at my brother's house with him and the cutest baby in the world and my sister-in-law and we got some ice cream and I think the combination of that helped me just to like not think about school or <sighs> this existential dread that I'm feeling um, because I am extremely dramatic. But it is like 10.20 right now and I pretty much haven't done anything today. So I have to wake up early tomorrow because I am getting blood work done. Um, so my appointment for that is at like 8.45. So I'm not trying to stay up too late tonight, but I just like really feel like I need to get this reading list submitted. So I'm going to just write whatever I write and email it to my chair because I can't have this hanging over me any longer because I really think this is... 95% of my existential dread right now. All right, nearly two hours later, the email has been submitted to my chair. The draft of the reading list is as good as it's gonna get until he tells me to send it to the rest of my committee. Um, I wish I could say that like, in it took me two hours because I was writing this really beautiful thing, but literally I was writing 200 words. I just, it was really hard, <laughs> writing is hard, but I'm going to go to bed now and wake up tomorrow, hopefully feeling more energized to get a move on things. Hello, happy Wednesday, still in bed, it is 12.30 p.m. So this morning was a little bit of a wild ride. <laughs> because I went to have just like some medical stuff done, have my blood drawn just for like some routine tests, and I ended up getting really sick after that. Um, I'm pretty squeamish and like I pass out pretty easily, and I haven't gotten my blood drawn in any time that I can remember in my life because I could like just put it off because I am so nervous about it, so I was pretty anxious about that. Um, but I don't think it was the anxiety that made me sick. I think it was just like, for whatever reason, like I didn't look, my eyes were closed, um, but the act of like giving blood or something just makes me want to pass out. So I was sitting down and I had told her like, oh, I'm pretty squeamish, like, uh, oh, kind of nervous. And she's like, oh, you'll be fine. And then everything was fine. And then when she was done, I was like, whoo, I do not feel so great. And my body was just like, dripping in sweat and I was like I need to lay down but I was like in a chair I couldn't lay down on the floor and so then just started throwing up because if I couldn't pass out I was gonna throw up um so I threw up a couple times even though I had fasted and there was like nothing left in my stomach so I came back home um thank god my mom went with me she could like drive me home um so I came back home and I just like tried to sleep it off and I was hoping that I'd feel like perfectly fine in time for class this morning at 11 45 but I just like still don't I still feel eh so I'm taking it slow eating some yogurt just ate some toast some Gatorade and I'm watching Firefly Lame the show is actually really good I mean it's like cheesy and it's cute there is sexual assault in it um which I did not know so trigger warning there um but if you're looking for like a cutesy show, this is it. Okay, time to start being productive. It's a little after three o'clock. I'm going to hop on my first Zoom call for the day. I still feel a little weird. Um, like my stomach still feels weird. I have like a very sensitive stomach as is. So I think the fact that I went a significant chunk of time like without eating to prepare for the blood test, which was just like a routine <laughs> blood test. Um, and then that I was vomiting, it's like just in a weird state right now. So I ate some toast, ate some yogurt, ate just like a PB&J, but I couldn't even finish it. And I drank some peppermint tea, and I'm just drinking some blue Gatorade. So hopefully I start feeling better um, in a little bit here. But yes, I'm currently Zooming for, or about to get on the Zoom call, for a research meeting that I'm part of with um, a few different people 
from my school, from my program. Um, my chair is the one who's in charge of it. And we are researching basically like social annotation and stuff like that. I've been part of this since like late summer. No, not in the summer. The research project started in late summer and I hopped on sort of in the middle of the fall semester. So I'm going to hop on this Zoom call, Zoom for an hour. And then I work in the writing center from four to eight tonight. But as of now, no one has signed up yet. So I might just have a really slow day because that's how the world is working for me this week. Alrighty, quite a bit later now, 8.45 p.m. I just got out of the shower and I have an interview tomorrow morning. So in my previous vlog, or maybe the vlog two before that, I can also take off these blue light glasses. Um, I talked about a cover letter that I was writing for a job that I'm applying to that I don't want to get too much into detail for because I don't like jinxing things, um, get weird about it. Um, but yes, my interview is tomorrow at 11, so I want to do some prep for that. But first things first, I want to pick out a cute outfit, even though only this much of me will be seen on Zoom. So this is probably choice number one as of now. The cute neck, the puffed out sleeves. I feel professional in it. This might be option number three. It's just a wrap dress here, but I do like that the sleeves have this sort of puffed detail going on. It's also like quarter length sleeve, long sleeve. And this is option number three. This is a long sleeve shirt. And then just has like this cute little necktie here. I think I'll probably do the romper or the dress because I know if I wear this, I'm going to be wearing like PJ shorts or something. And I think it'll help me feel more in like the professional setting if I'm wearing a dress or this long romper. So depending on how I feel in the morning when I try them on, it'll probably be one of those two. Now the more of sort of serious part of an interview prep. I haven't done very many interviews in my life if I'm being completely honest like I can definitely count them on one hand the number of interviews that I've had so I'm sure there's better advice out there but what works for me personally is I am planning on pulling up a word doc and just free writing just free writing um sort of loose responses to questions like why do I want this job um why do I think I'm qualified for this job what questions do I have um, and sort of starting from there. I'm also going to look back at the call for applications um, because I know that they listed a few specific things um, that they were looking for in um, a candidate for this job and I'm going to look back at my cover letter because I'm sure that that is going to be where the professor interviewing me pulls a lot of the information from. So let's start out with just simple little free write. Okay, so about 30 minutes later, I think, and I wrote a thousand words, <laughs> just like really typing out everything that was inside of my brain. Um, and for free, free writing for me is it to get it perfect, not by any means. It's just to dump it all out. So I wanted to just dump everything out that's inside my brain um, and just have it here in writing typed up because it can type faster than I can write. Um, and my interview actually isn't until 11.30 tomorrow, so I think that's all that I'm going to do for tonight. I went back through the cover letter as well, and I had sent it to my roommate, um, who's also in the same program as me, and she gave me some, like, advice on it, but more than anything, she, like, pointed to specific areas that are like, dang, if you had more space, I would like to see you develop here. So that makes me feel like those are good areas to anticipate my professor possibly asking me questions. Again, if this cover letter is sort of like a conversation starter, he might point out like, okay, this part here, what do you mean by that? Can you give me a little more detail? So if my roommate was confused, um, or not confused, but was like, I want a little more detail, he probably will want some more info there too. So I pinpointed those specific questions um, that she had and free wrote some responses to that too. Um, one of the hardest parts for interviews for me is always, um, being prepared to answer two of the hardest questions, I think, which is, like, 
what's your biggest weakness? Um, or like what what challenge you anticipate being the hardest challenge to overcome? Um, and then also like what questions do you have? So I feel like a lot of people say like, oh, well, you can just say that your biggest weakness is that you're so dedicated and so passionate. That's like so fake. <laughs> That's, I don't know. That's just not me. So trying to be honest and say like, what is genuinely my biggest weakness? Um, it's a little tough. Not obviously not because I think I'm perfect, but because that I want to give a really genuine response here. Um, and sometimes it's hard. It's hard to sort of critique ourselves like that. And in terms of brainstorming about what questions I possibly have, um, I was able to come up with like two or three specific ones that are more than just like, how many hours do you think I'm gonna have to work for this job? Um, but that are like, what hopes do you have for this role in the future? What hopes do you have for this program in the future? Um, and then questions related to sort of like the timeliness of everything, like what challenges do you imagine us facing as we return, like face-to-face -face, um, instruction in the fall? Um, and what does that mean for my role? What does that mean for our program? Stuff like that. I feel like those show that I've put a little more thought into this than sort of like the classic, um, when do I start? How many hours? <laughs> um, again, these are just my thoughts and this is how I'm preparing for this interview. Happy Thursday! It is 11.15, my interview is in 15 minutes. I went with the black romper like I thought I would. Didn't do my hair because I didn't hate it this morning, so I just kept it natural. But I did do my makeup, tried out some of the new products I got at Ulta, the highlight. The lighting is pretty bad, but it's pretty glowy, I like it. Um, broke out some lipstick for the first time in months, used the primer, the best mascara in the world. Um, but yeah, I'm extremely nervous. Like way more nervous than I thought I would be. I also didn't do my hair because I'm already sweating and I couldn't imagine putting like a hot tool to it. So I'm like shaky from coffee and from nerves. <sighs> okay, it's done. Um, I feel like it went relatively well. I, he, he wasn't on the meeting for like the first five minutes and I was like, what's going on? Am I in the wrong Zoom link? So I sent him an email and was like, just checking to make sure I'm in the wrong place. And then he popped on, he was like, sorry, I was in the wrong place. Um, and he said that I should know by this weekend or Monday at the latest. So glad that I don't have to be wondering or anxious for too long. Um, and I really do think that writing that free write helped a lot because, um, it just gave me like some common talking points that I knew I wanted to make sure that I hit. But more than anything, I'm happy because I feel like I was like very true to myself. Um, I felt like I wasn't trying to like give answers that he wanted to hear. I was giving honest, genuine answers. So I know that if I'm not picked for the job, it's because it just wasn't a good fit. It's not because um, there's necessarily anything wrong with me. It's just because there are people who are a better fit necessarily. Um, so we shall see. Um, I am also glad that I bring some, some questions to ask because he left um, a bit of time at the end so I could um, ask what questions I had. <sighs> Okay, so interview done. It is almost 12.30. I tutor in the writing center from one to four. And then I have a lot of work that I haven't done this week because this week has just been less than ideal to say the least. Um, so I am doing an independent study about composition studies, women writers, feminism. And I'm sort of done with the reading portion of the independent study and now I'm working on writing something. So what I'm trying to do in that class is put together um, a way that I would teach this course if it were like a grad seminar, because my professor who's also my chair slash advisor told me that when you apply for jobs, that's something that they look for is like, how would you teach a grad class? So um, having this one sort of in my pocket already would be really useful. So I'm gonna go back through the works that we read and try and create not like a syllabus necessarily, but like try and identify some key themes that I saw in these works, try to identify some areas where I think um, I could incorporate new works that speak to those areas um, and arrange it all and come up with like, I don't know, a rough skeleton of what I would want this class to look like. 
and hopefully in a way that will also relate to um, what I eventually want to do with my ultimate dissertation project because I know that it will have to do with writing and feminism <laughs> in some way or another because uh, those are two of my biggest commitments we'll say um, so I think this will be a good starting place and then we'll see where I go from there and I meet with him on Friday morning so I need to have like something drafted um, tonight Okay, just finished at the writing center. I am about to change into some exercise clothes. It's 4.15. I typically, when I walk at the park, I walk in the mornings, but I've been staring at the screen since like 10.30 a.m. So I am going to take a break, get my body moving. of lesson planning and have a PowerPoint here to show my students and honestly I spent over an hour looking over this lesson plan trying to figure out what I want to do tomorrow nice I didn't take my makeup off all the way <laughs> um which I had my lesson plan from when I taught the same thing last semester so I can only imagine how much time I spent last semester putting this together because it took me over an hour just to like refresh and who man a lot of time with bad lesson planning in the fall for sure and i've also been working on putting together some type of like hypothetical syllabus if i were to teach my independent study at the grad level and oh my gosh it's throwing me into the same existential dread that putting together my reading list was so here's what I have so far. Um, a really, really rough working title, a feminist understanding of rhetoric and composition. And then I want to have like some type of inquiry question or like narrative three line for the class. So right now I have, what does it mean to exist as a woman in rhetoric and composition? This is entirely too vague. Um, and it doesn't really mean anything. And then I have some specific themes here. I want to have a course description. And then I've sort of just like categorized the readings by week. I'm thinking of separating this hypothetical class into one part about like how um, like feminist redefinitions of rhetoric and then the second part feminist redefinitions of composition um, whereas like only four weeks will be spent on rhetoric and then um, more time much more time will be spent on composition included as like writing what what writing even means the teaching of writing and then like writing program administration and I have some readings filled out here but also it just has made me really like get into such heavy questions like what's the relationship between rhetoric and composition? What's the relationship between thinking and writing? What's the relationship between reading and writing? What's the relationship between being, existing, and writing? And this is when I just gotta shut it all down and go to bed. Friday finally I made it to Friday didn't know if this would happen this week um, it was a rough one for sure so I'm gonna go ahead and get ready for the day I had a slow morning drank some coffee was just talking to my parents played some Animal Crossing um, and I have my independent study at noon today and there's a little more well there's a lot more work that I should do but I'm just gonna do as much as I can so I'm gonna go get ready natural gal mascara on the top lashes that blush stick some good old chapstick on my lips and then the tula under eye glowy skin balm 
did even brush my hair today. This is the look we're going for. <laughs> of teaching is done it's 2 45 i really need to hurry up and eat something for lunch before my next section starts at three but i'm so glad that i spent time like i mean i always make sure that i feel prepared before i teach but i'm glad that like i had something like entertaining prepared for class today because all of a sudden my um i don't know what to call her she's sort of like course coordinator popped into the zoom and she's like oh i'm observing today and i was like hello were you gonna tell me so was nervous for that. Um, glad nothing horrible happened. Um, yeah, I guess expect the unexpected is the lesson here. Second class of the day is done, and that means I'm free for the weekend. It has been a very long and trying week. So I'm gonna take today to chill. I might even get a head start out of the vlog. Who knows? Um, but if you watch the whole thing all the way through, thanks so much for watching. Um, if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe already. Leave me a comment. I try to respond to all of them. Um, and more than anything, just thank you guys so much for giving me a reason to make these videos. And that's all I have. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.